No, no, no. Hi, Greg. Come on. What are you doing? Be polite. <laughs> it's also kind Greg, of impolite. Because... <laughs> it's not his name. <laughs> Did I say Craig? No, uh, Victor, you said Greg. Greg. His name is oh. Craig. Sorry, Craig. Just, yeah. just have to be nicer so I actually learned his name. I'm sorry, <laughs> I think. Now answer the question, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Any one of y'all want to kind of recap what happened in the last session? Any of y'all remember what happened in the last session? I was resounding silent. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Maria kept, saved us from having to fight that one lady. We got medicine. We went to a thing that I misunderstood the complete structure of. And it was awkward for like three hours. We all rolled like crap. Yeah. <laughs> All of the bad rolls. <laughs> we got the medicine. We didn't have to fight a thing. We, again, fleed the scene while police arrived. Yep. Things <laughs> that were marginally our fault. Yeah. Um, Anima got sick. Anima rolled a natural one on one of the only things that Anima's good at. That was cool. That's okay. Better that than, like, a death save. That bad roll did result in Anima having instinctual memory that she, as far as she knows, has no reason to remember. That's true. I Thank you for giving me a nice thing to balance out the fact that I was really hacked off with my rolls last night. I'm kind of thankful you got a not-so-great roll on that, because I was like, you know, this would be a good place to put in something. It felt like a consolation prize, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, and I think I am. So I've decided how I'm going to kind of roll with your memory stuff. Cool. If it's kind of like a more instinctual, like, sense memory, it's wisdom. But if it's, like, more of, like, specific, like, name, person, place thing, that's going to be intelligence. Because I'm like, that that makes a little bit more sense than all intelligence. Because some things are just sort of natural reflex things. That's completely fine because they're both terrible. <laughs> hey, you got something. Wisdom are garbage. Well, you need to hit the books, I guess. I don't know what else to say. Sorry. You'll get something. It's just a kind of depends, like how specific of a something you'll get. Another freaking one. Plus, if all else fails, dreams are a thing. Yeah. That's terrifying and ominous. 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 <laughs> We're really tired. Okay. It's 2 p.m. I have ginger peach green tea, and there's a person behind me, so. <laughs> okay. That's um, vaguely concerning. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we ended off with everyone kind of going to do their own thing on this ship. Spectra pages over the over the I forgot to name what planet you're going to. Um, hang on. He did like, um bring up a fancy name generator, but she pages over the intercom that you should be arriving within a couple of hours. She'll give another alert when you're close enough. Polly goes off to the cargo bay to basically just go and double check things with the medicine make sure everything's alright and everything is secure and it's her area of expertise so she just wants to make sure everything turned out alright and what do y'all want to do? I can't remember I know that Erida looked into the kitchen and then kept walking but I don't remember if I saw her or not you might have, like, noticed her in passing, but I think you might have been distracted by your conversation with Holly. If you want to... I have garbage perception. <laughs> it's, like, ten. Okay, so most likely, like... My passive perception is twelve! Hey! Oh, God! I'll say you probably noticed someone walking by, but you didn't particularly notice who it was, because they asked pretty quickly. I mean, there's only, like, four other people on the ship. Whoever was just walked by us from when you can tell kept going. 
Okay. I'm going to stay and drink my tea in the kitchen. Y'all finished up that conversation, and then she went to the med bay. Erda, you are going to unwind and listen to your song a bit, and why, what were you doing again? Or what would you like to do? I talked to my mentor for a bit, so I don't know if that kind of counted. Because I remember we ended it on me talking with my mentor. You might have, like, gone back and forth a bit for, like, about 30 minutes or so. Uh, you've, you've still got some time if you would like to do something else in the meantime. Well, I guess we can get started on something. Can't think of anything for her to research right now. Have we checked in the, on the song in a while? We did that the end of last episode, right before my mentor contacted me. Okay. So that was like half an hour ago. Yeah, so it's you, you maybe come back and kind of check in on that at the end of this. Just just check it at the end of every session in case your DM decides to feed you a breadcrumb. I would go to the library and research about the um, the Volna. Try to understand more, sort of in preparation for us going to the planet to their colony. Oh, we'll investigation. See what you find. <coughs> Don't die. It's bad for your health. I like you to That's very rude of them. I agree. Ooh. Well, it's lower than my passive investigation. What's your passive investigation? Okay. Because it's either a 7 or an 11. So... Okay, so... As you're looking, you see... They're, oh, well, I was about to say, no, I was about to say they're the straight, one of the stranger strikes you've seen so far, but, um, you've got Tali, who's hot pink and has tentacle hair, and apparently dentists are supposed to be much subtler colors, but I've already made her bubblegum pink, so some of them might be, but she's bubblegum pink. When you're looking at the Volna, the first thing you notice is they're basically cat people. Okay. Most of them resemble lions and tigers. They're very sort of emotionally based. They act on instinct and follow that more than they do logic. And whenever a Valma shows anger or acts of aggression in any way, it's usually because it's a survival instinct, they're hungry, or there's something keeping them from going forward. Uh, they are also very empathetic people, and they can be very loyal. They tend to live in tribes and packs, and they're incredibly loyal and protective of those. One of the things you see in their history is they've almost been wiped out before. There's also the fact that their homeworld was very unforgiving. The planet you're going to isn't their homeworld, because some of the tribes and packs have moved off-planet, but you get the fact that they're tough, they're lean, they're very much survival-focused, but they have learned to adapt while holding on to their traditions. And if you, say, do an act of service for them, such as, say, you know, delivering a medicine that will help the pack you know, not all die um, whatever is plaguing them that can earn their respect a lot and they sometimes they might consider the people who do things such as that for them as like honorary members of the pack okay imagine you probably spend about an hour or so just looking through information Okay, in the library, there are the computer terminals, as well as uh, physical reading materials, is that correct? Yes. Oh, also, I've decided the name of the planet is Rakura. Here's the thing. Basically, I'd like to get better at detecting traps and things like that. It's just, I'm not sure if it would be best to look online right now, because just putting out sort of like hey how are some better ideas to look for traps and silent alarms and things sounds a little how do I thief better yeah <laughs> I want to build a better rogue 
probably be books first to at least get well I mean yeah I mean I can assassin pretty well it's just thievery is not yeah <laughs> you, you want to possibly learn more about security measures and stuff available in the alliance yeah we'll go about things like that or different ways to like detect things I don't Hmm. I imagine by being able to like look into how the devices used in this part of space work could help you start figuring out how to get around it will be another investigation. Oh boy. That's an 8 or another another 11. Ugh, say another 11. It's not good. You look at the books and you can't really find anything that sticks out, but after about 20 minutes of just kind of wandering around staring at the shelves, you do notice there is a little directory that kind of shows how the books are organized. Okay. And when you look at that, you do see noted where there's a book or two, as well as some, like, trade magazines that they just kind of picked up along the way that you can open and flip through. There's some stuff on ship-side security measures, as well as planet-side security measures, and things like that. So you, it takes you a bit, but you're able to find a good starting point to sort of start getting a grasp of what's available, what's out there. Okay. As well as maybe some of the companies who produce these things, they can take that and follow it, because in your past, you've done research on security systems before, so you kind of know how to follow that rabbit trail. Yeah. There's now a wider variety of things, and you're a bit, it's a bit like starting from scratch, but you do still have the skills to be able to find the information. Okay. So I imagine you just kind of take some time to start reading over that and learning from that, maybe occasionally sort of look up and see some of the names of popular security companies in case you want to learn more about their stuff later. Okay. And you spend about the next hour doing that. Erda, what are you up to? I wasn't listening to my song. I was writing a new one. And it's probably going to be... It's This one's going to be more complicated, so it's probably going to take longer to actually finish. So you're just going to be sitting working on that till y'all get to where you're going? Yeah. And Anima, any other things you want to do after you've taken the time to finish your tea before we get to the planet? No. Just, just going to sit there and contemplate your tea? I'm going to think real hard about it. Do you want to roll another wisdom check to see if there's anything else that comes back? Sure, let's do that. Oh, D20, D20, which one? <laughs> oh no. That's a natural 20. Hey! Oh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Nor was I. Logically, you know you've never had this tea before. Uh huh. And you cannot remember a specific time having it before. But you know you've had it before. You know what I mean? Yeah. As you're sitting there staring at it, it's like you feel like just that hint of like memories and conversations and like you see glimpses of faces of maybe people you've talked to while drinking it before. Just it, it reminds you of people. You can't quite lock the name, you can't quite lock the face. Your DM was not prepared to give what about what she was going to give you if you got a nat 20 on this. I did get a nat 20 on this. You should have been prepared, BJ. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Your DM doesn't think things through. <laughs> you gave me the option and I took it. Yeah. You also remember something about the doctor. I don't remember who they were, but you remember they were important to you. For someone who basically dedicated their lives to saving lives from diseases and stuff that no one had been able to cure yet. You don't remember how you know them, but you know they're really important and you, for some reason, associate them with the tea. 
there are any other things Anna would, would like to remember? I could throw some other stuff in there. <laughs> Question. How rare was this disease that we're going to um, give the medicine to? It's something that only really affects the Volna. There possibly be any connection between this doctor and this medicine? It's possible. It's possible that the doctor has worked with this before. It isn't as deadly as it used to be for the Volna, both because people have been able to figure out medicine, like ways to treat it, but do I want to make you roll an intelligence check to see if Anima makes that connection? I think I do. Okay. So that's where Casey's mind jumped, but I don't... Six. I don't know if Anima's gonna quite make that connection. Okay. Shit. Well, Alright. Because still getting memories back and you're not entirely sure where this mysterious mm-hmm. person fits in with everything... And there's also, you still don't know a whole lot about whatever this, like, illness is that's plaguing this particular tribe. Question. Completely out of context, because I don't have it written down. Did you decide what the place the medicine came from? I know you were trying to decide that last time. That was from, hang on, let me, hospital names, hospital names, there's gotta be a button on here somewhere. (laughs) I don't remember if you said it. Before. Place names. There we go. Hospital names. One second. I name it. I find it. Um, I love how one of the first options is being in general. I'm like, no, we're not using that. Let's go with, I like this one. It's a Serenity, a Serenity Medical Clinic. Okay. It's called a clinic, but they've got clinics all over. And all of us would know that? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Probably would have explained that. Anything else anyone is curious about while we're doing the traveling thing? Not really. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Alright, so about an hour, an hour and a half passes rather uneventfully when you hear this alert noise and all of you are... Grooms are like, imagine you can kind of see the hallway through the doorways, and you see this red light just ripple across the walls. And for a second, there there's nothing, and then you hear over the intercom. Can everyone get up to the helm, please? You might have a problem. Vi's racing up there. She was probably startled and like getting ready to move when she saw the light. I'm going. Yeah going quickly. Ferda, are you also? Yes. Everyone rushes up to the front, and when you get up there, you see Spectra, Tully, and Tyre all at their spots at the helm, and you see there are two... How big are these ships? They're not as big as the Opal Star, but you can tell they're significantly better armed, and they seem to be in communication with the ship, but you can see Spectra is kind of, seems to be arguing back and forth with him, and as you come in, she's like, get down, she'll be fine. You hear a voice coming over. Are unauthorized to be here. You will come in for questioning. And she just cuts him up. My name is Spectra Lamorelli. You will stand down. And there's a pause after he says the name. Yes, that's Spectra. Know your boss? Talk to him. We didn't mean to encroach on your territory. We're just trying to pass through. It's no problem. I'll move. I won't. And you kind of see... The two ships still look like they're armed. But they kind of float back a bit. It's like you're in a bit of a stalemate. Until he looks over here and she's like, Yeah, Spectra, did you? You know, that's not what she wants. Sorry, DM me is a little bit more comfy. I should stop talking about myself in third person like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just kind of a moment where they exchange glances until he's like, Spectra, what did we just walk into? Looks like the asteroid mining operation has moved 
further than I realized. We must have gotten too close and triggered the borderline. Don't worry. I'm old friends with the person running this operation. Just give them time. They'll let us pass. Okay. I hope that it's like actual old friends and not like some of our other old friends, because I'd rather not pick a fight with those guys. That reminds me, and she looks back at y'all. We should probably start teaching y'all combat stuff on the ship. We can do that after this mission. How do y'all react? Honestly, I'm probably not focused on Tally's side comments. I'm probably already running through the variety of spells that I know, thinking, what's the best way to knock out a ship? There's two of them that you can see. Two more than expected. <laughs> and how far away are they? They're not, like, right on top of the ship, but you get the feeling they're close enough to where you couldn't really try and escape without getting uh, sustaining at least some damage, though you haven't exactly seen the Opal Star in combat. But there's enough space where there won't be any sort of accidental encounters, but they're still just close enough to be vaguely uncomfortable. You can see Spectra is just absolutely glaring daggers at these two. I do have an actual response with an actual spell. I'm going to cast Amplify Ability, and one of my dro uh, one of my drones is going to fly over and sit on Spectra's shoulder and boost her charisma. Okay. I like that. How much does it boost by? Uh, Doesn't Amplify Ability just give advantage? Does it? I don't remember what, it, what does what. I have my little spellbook thingamajig. I just got to pull it up. My bad. Did not expect to be casting spells. <laughs> uh, Y'all like to dope around combat, so I've had to get creative. Amplify ability. Okay. I mean, it's just a cantrip. It's not a ton, but... You noped around combat for us last time. Yep. <laughs> that entirely depended on how well Maria did on that roll. Mm -hmm. They get a d4. Oh. Nice. She's got good stats. Oh, and she can choose which, which stat to use. Okay. I mean, she can have good stats and still have a garbage roll. A d4 is a d4. Like, somehow, um, she has, like, a plus three to everything. And <laughs> a plus five to intelligence. I rolled really well for her. You can have a good roll and add the d4s of fuck you. For example? That is true. So, Anima, Vi, how are y'all handling this? Yeah, I have no idea what to do. I am close quarters combat, baby! I don't know what I'm doing. Fighter class blues. Did Spectre give us a sort of tour of how the helm worked? She's probably showed you some of the very basic functions, but some of the more complex stuff, it's kind of... They've been okay. easing you into the functionality because they know the technology. It's it's a lot more advanced than they're, you're used to. Okay. You know how to activate a lot of the emergency stuff if like something happens and you're there, but they haven't really started teaching you the more defensive or offensive capabilities yet. Would there be any scanners that we would know how to use? It's possible that you would, but you've also got I and Tully running things. So okay. you can kind of look over and see that they're running scanners on things, and Tully might kind of... Well, I mean, if you ask, she would share it with you. Or if you ask any questions. I don't want to because the other guys are definitely listening because they're sort of glaring at each other at this point. Correct? She's glaring at the ships that are like far out. Like there aren't like actual people on board. It's like two little... It's like fighter jets. Okay. No, but like the communications are still open, right? The, the transmission between ships hasn't ended, has it? 
think of it kind of more of unlike with this where it's whenever you talk it picks up it's more of like a you push a button and then talk and it only picks it's it's the push to talk so it only transmits when she's telling it to transmit okay so tally talking about teaching us combat with the ship did not go to them at all oh yeah no 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 <laughs> okay Ollie would not say that where they could hear it. <laughs> Okay, for a second I thought she did, and that was not... <laughs> that was concerning. Okay, is it video and audio, or just audio? Right now it's just audio. You know the ship is capable of doing both. But right now it's just the audio, and you get the feeling Spectra was very unhappy about this encounter and is not about to give them video. Okay. You can actually hear her muttering under her breath and cash a bit. <laughs> Bye, you're able to sort of pick up, like, grateful little... Really? My ship? We're barely close to pick up on the radar. Really? Well, you weren't able to, like, pick up on all of it, but you get the sense that... Yeah. It's not as much as she's worried about them as she's a little offended that they dare, like, accuse her of trying to breach their place. So the rest, Anima, since you've kind of watched more military personnel, roll insight. Insight. Twelve. You can tell that, like, Spectra's upset slash slightly offended by this situation. She doesn't like whatever accusations they were flinging at her before y'all got in. When you walked in, it was, like, on the, in the middle of a conversation. Yeah. I would actually, like, talk to Tali real quick. Well, and everyone, really, but... So, what's going on here? You said they're mining ship? Why would they care about us? Are they just not wanting to let anyone through? Factor's going to respond. It's a private mining operation run by someone who is very, very protective of whatever it is that they're doing. It's just some people decide they like to be asses. And since what they're mining is asteroids, their operation moves. And we usually keep track of it, but I didn't realize that my flight path was going to get close to theirs. And we got close enough to trigger their security alert. And now we're sitting here dealing with these two. Who are not taking very well to the... We didn't mean to come here, please let us go on our way. Ah. From what I can tell, it looks like this operation... Uh, go around it, it's going to set us back a little bit, which shouldn't be a problem, it's just really annoying. Okay. So... Are there only two ships right now, or are there more, and these are, like, scouts? I think of these as the warning shot. If no doubt, there's some more circling. This is not the fight we want to pick. No, no. The owner of this operation happens to owe me quite a bit, so... Uh, hopefully, if they're ever able to get a hold of him... And I'll get them to stand down and let this continue on our way. But surely they can tell we're not a mining class. This isn't a mining class ship. Why wouldn't they let us through? Is this owner so paranoid that they don't want any ships at all to go near them? Yes. Okay. Like I said, some people are assholes. He has a good deal of money from this operation, and there's been some issues in the past with pirates and thieves, so he's adapted the mentality of shoot first, ask questions later. Thankfully, their first shot missed. Which reminds me, I'm going to start putting all of you in rotations to start learning how to operate the guns on the ship, as well as the escape pods and some other features we have. Okay. But I'm not particularly worried this time. Spectra, are you... I don't necessarily want details, but... Are you sure he's not... That this owner is not the type to... When seeing an opportunity of... Potentially getting rid of 
debt to someone by having them in a precarious situation, you don't think they'll decide to erase that debt a little permanently? She just looks back at you over her shoulder. She's like, it's a fair line of questioning, but I'm not sure erasing a life debt by killing the person who saved your life is the best way to do it. Yes, okay. I thought it was more a physical or monetary sort of debt. Okay. Oh, there is some of that, but it's not as much. It's bad at poker. (laughs) Oh yeah, we haven't had our poker night yet, have we? Sorry, getting off track. No, we haven't. Things seem to go sideways, but it will happen at some point. Spectra looks like we're getting another hail. Wonderful. Let them through. I have been given permission to escort you through the operation. You will stay with us. You will not deviate. Is that understood? Certainly. Tell your boss I say hello. There's no response and you just see the gunships turning around. Well, it's like instead of getting shot, we get escorts. I don't have to go around this entire operation. Didn't hear another ping. Please limit all scanning operations while passing through the... Oh, yes, 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 I know. She gestures to Tally, who hits a bunch of buttons and it shuts off all like all the scanners and sensors except for the ones to detect if, you know, you're about to get hit by an asteroid. It's like motion sensors in a way. All right. Yeah. Proximity sensor may be a better... It's more of the emergency alert and less of the stuff that could possibly, you know, be downloading information on a mining operation. Yeah, it's just like incoming object. Incoming laser. And you also catch Spectrum muttering under her breath and catch a very familiar phrase. Stupid, paranoid, rich people. <laughs> <laughs> Which I imagine is one you've heard quite a bit. Yeah. After a couple minutes, a Spectra rec- says she recommends you stay in your seats until we until they've passed through, just in case something goes wrong. And you're able to get through the operation uneventfully. Through the windows, you're able to see several small mining ships flying by. It's like it's far enough away to where you can't see any details, but close enough to where you can tell it's small mining ships, and there are some larger floating security ships, and the whole way you can see the two gunners following you. Holly points to some ex- like to some external cameras that she has pulled up, and you can see that there's also two behind you as well. But after about like 15 or 20 minutes of awkward silence, you can tell Spectra is calming down now. She's still tense and alert and a little irritated, but she's relaxing more. And after a few more minutes pass, you got past her to the other side. And the first two kind of spread out a little bit. They turn back and you hear one last thing over the comms. Please be careful to not cross through our area again. Don't worry, I wasn't planning on it that time. Ty cut off comms. Oddly, not a fan of him. Yes, I'm not either. Not silver for some things. Alright, so that was all very exciting. At about another 20 or 30 minutes until we arrive, if you want to hang around here or go gather anything. Until I looks up. Is it alright if I run back to the med bay to run back to the. Not, not med bay. Cargo bay to double check on the medicine? Get it ready for transport? Absolutely. If there's anything I need you to run, I'll, I can direct land it back there. Okay, that works. Looks like a deal. So, that was fun. I'm gonna be back in the cargo bay if y'all need me. France is off. What do y'all do? It goes back to me and probably be like, well, if you need anything else, I'll be going back to what I was doing before. Thoughts at you. Alright. Anima, what are you doing? You know what? I bought cooking stuff. I'm gonna go put that away. I bought that right at the beginning when we arrived on, um... Forgot what it was called, too. <laughs> yep. 
Sidraria. Yes. There we go. I'm gonna go put those up. Just get all your stuff set up in the galley. Yep. You've spent enough time in there, you've kind of more or less figured out where some things go. And as you're, as you start arranging it, are you still kind of thinking about the weird memory stuff? A little bit. As you're starting to sort of arrange stuff in the galley, you do notice that you're organizing things in a particular way. Mm hmm. Just because, like, it just feels natural. So I'm not even going to make you roll. You're going to be like, I've organized this stuff before. When you get done arranging things, it kind of feels more... The galley feels a little bit more like home in a way. Hmm. As your interest in cooking may have started before you find yourself in the Federation. Might have started... Anyway. Yep. Okay. Hi, what you doing? That's a good question. I mean... I'm interested in the mining operation because it seems very hush-hush, the owner's very paranoid, and even Spectra doesn't really... I think she said that she doesn't really know what is being mined, but I also don't know the company name or logo or anything like that, so I may just leave that for now. Would you like to ask? Sure, yeah. Hey, Spectra, what was that company? Why are they even mining that they're so worried about it? I mean, it couldn't be simple metal or anything like that. No, it's nothing simple. I'm not entirely sure that this... There are some people in the Alliance who do business through back channels. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, not all of them are doing it because it's bad or dangerous. Some people just do it because they don't want to deal with the paperwork of having a business. Which, from what they've been able to gather so far, is what he's doing. He's just found an asteroid belt that's rich in some particular kind of well sought after metal, and he does his stealing under the table. He's a bit. Paranoid and a bit odd, but he is not a bad person. Just weird, rich person. Okay, all right. Is there anything about the vuln that we need to know? Like, should we prepare to bring weapons? Should we leave them here? Is the atmosphere one that we'd be able to breathe in? Is there anything we need to know about this colony about before we land, or are we just drop off medicine? and then leaving. The Volna of Brief Air is we do, so that's not going to be a problem. I've been to a dif- Rakura before, so it was a different part, but it, it is breathable. Okay. I don't know for sure if we're going to be invited to stay in the colony. Ty is actually soon going to be radioing ahead to let them know that we are arriving and sort of fill them in on the change of plans. Okay. So we may be invited, in which case, I'd rather tell all of you at the same time. Okay. A lot of the Ivana held very strict to their traditions, so weapons should be fine, just you may be asked to leave them outside of the home or in a particular area. Alright. They're very interesting people, just... If I get to interact with them, follow my lead, and this tribe may have some interesting traditions, just roll with it, and if you're uncomfortable, let one of us know and we'll try and help. What language do they speak? Awkward moment of, oh, do they not speak common? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's that's a concern. (laughs) They don't speak common, it might, uh decide for you what language Emma speaks. <laughs> yeah. Unless they speak lingo. <laughs> In which case, that would be weird, but possible. Yeah. She's gonna answer. You all have their own language, but a lot of the tribes that deal with the alliance, they do have some who speak common. And we also okay. have some translation devices that I'll make sure it gets distributed, but and 
Also, this will be explained to both of you, Ferda and Anima, when you get the devices, but it's a thing where if it's a known language and it, it can translate it into a language that you speak. It's a babblefish. But you have to be looking at the person who is talking, like focus on them, and then it'll translate. So if you're a room full of people speaking a bunch of different languages, it won't be automatically translating them all. But if you're like looking directly at someone, you're close enough to be able to hear it, it could start translating it for you. Question about that, for mechanically speaking. When you say directly at, you know how you can sort of side eye people to where you're faced in one direction but your eyes go in another, would that be sufficient for it? Like if Vi was wearing her glasses and facing one way but gl- but watching someone like to her right, would that work? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably not as well. You like you may be able to pick up on some, but it would be kind of like a staticky phone call. Something. Okay. You might be able to pick up on some of it, and sometimes also like distance. And cause issues like if you're in a really crowded room, you, it helps to be closer. Okay, so it's better when it's more in front of the person that you're wanting to hear be. Wanting to communicate. With. Yeah. Or overhear things. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Also, I'm going to retcon and actually say you guys got this a little bit after getting back on the ship, after everything. So it's not like a, you're just getting them before you, like, get off the ship. It's You've, you've had some times to kind of get used to it and figure it out. And maybe spend a little bit of time over a meal, like, practicing, making sure it works or something. So, is it a large device? Is it a small device? It's something small, and it's something a lot of people have. So, I'm realizing how I just described it as working. Uh, um... And actually think all the way through how it worked. Okay. You have a, an item that does exist that can do the thing for you. The Babblefish from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's the device you're trying to describe. So would it be a sort of... Well, I don't know if it would make sense, though. It would be a sort of earpiece. Because, well, yeah, no, I know Babblefish is just... It's an earpiece and space magic makes it work. Okay. Or space technology something. Yeah, there might also be like a sort of contact lens thing. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I like that. There's something... Uh, just, oh, let's or just like maybe it. like a microfilament wire or something that's close enough to your eye to get the visual aspect needed. I don't know. It grafts onto your skin and then it's like it's it's the magical thing that pairs with the earpiece. Okay. Cool. And that sounds cool. Cool. It, it probably like tingled a little bit when you put it on, but now it's like you forget it's there. There's also a device that um, that makes it really easy to take it off, like if you ever need to like take it off or replace it or something. Okay. So, Spectra, you talked about the Volna being very traditional. Is it going to be a problem of us bringing uh, technology with us, like our sim units or? At least in Farida's case, her drones, things like that. Oh no, that that won't that shouldn't be an issue. Well, as they've adopted technology into their lifestyle. Okay. It's not always to the extent that we have. They mm-hmm. mold it to their traditions. Okay. And we'll, right. we will be letting them know of some of the technology we bring. And I'm sure they've probably seen something like it before, so... Okay, I just didn't want to accidentally bring something that they are intentionally sort of not wanting any contact with, something like that. All right, okay. I know, it should, shouldn't be a problem. Cool. I've done some work with the Vol- with Volna before. All right. I've helped to recover some items of theirs. They have no troubles with outsiders bringing technology as long as... You respect their traditions and the way they choose to live. They don't mind the way you choose to live. They respect that as well. All right. Anything else anyone wants to do before we leave? Sounds good. Bye. You just gonna hang out in the helm? After a little bit, 
I'd probably move down to the shuttles to where I know we'll be going. Or, actually, I think the cargo bay is probably near that, so I'd check in on Tally, see if he wants help with anything real quick before we head there. Well, I mean, you've got about 20 or 30 minutes, so, like, after a few minutes, Tally kind of runs up and is like, Okay, yep, medicine is all good to go and ready to be transported. Yeah, I guess I'll just stay in the helm. I can't think of anywhere else to go, and if everyone's sort of reconvening here, then I might as well just stay. Okay. After a few minutes, there is an announcement that goes over the intercom. Five minutes until we enter the planet's atmosphere, if everyone would like to get to a secure place or come up to the helm. You've been granted permission to land. I imagine everyone just it's in their usual spot. As you're dropping down through the atmosphere, one of the things you notice is it's like you've seen auras before, but there have been a lot of really big cities. Rakura has a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You've never seen this much forest in one place before. There are just trees everywhere. And Spectra explains that there are some smaller outposts, but it's not as populated of a planet. Especially because some of the local fauna is kind of big, and you it's a little hard to set up a really, really big city without angering the local fauna. Yeah. And there's other planets that don't have as big a trees that you have to get rid of to build stuff. So it's mostly been left alone. There are a lot of scientists studying the like the nature there. And that is where the colony is. And it's a pretty smooth landing. There's a voice coming over the speaker that directs you all to a private landing platform that's like kind of sticks out because there's just this square of nothing surrounded by like all this plant and wildlife it's like this smooth square of nothing that's just does not look like it belongs there and spectra carefully settles the ship down onto that once the ship is just like a couple inches off the ground you notice is there is a sort of canopy like garage that you would never have seen from above and there's some more instructions that come over and so she replies something and carefully guides the opal star into that little garage it's a bit of a tight squeeze but it's it's no problem for her because she's been flying the ship for a certain length of time here <laughs> there's enough space but it looks like it might be a bit of a squeeze and as the ship lands, she's like, all right, well, let's go, shall we? Seems we have been least invited to come out and help deliver the medicine directly. So she puts the ship down, Ty says that he's going to stay back and keep an eye on the ship, because Maria is still going through all of the information she has gathered, and is just, like, parsing through Cindy's till the Alliance... Use this to screw him over. Send this to the Alliance. Use this to screw him over. Send this to the girlfriend. (laughs) Screw him over some more. Send this one to the wife. (laughs) Sorry, this is kind of off topic. I was concerned when you had Tally go to the cargo bay. Because I was like, oh no, did they steal that medicine from us? No, no, no. I just figured that'd be a fun way to keep you on your toes and also pop her last name in there. I was going to slip another naming tradition in there, but I forgot, so we'll get there later. <laughs> We're talking about how Alexis was concerned there for a second that who that our escorts had stolen medicine. Yes, that would not be good. Yeah, no, I no, not doing that until you all again. At least not in the same way as I did last time. Using the same trick twice is, uh, boring. Now the trick is you gotta find a new way to do the same trick that the players never see coming. I mean, I'm already getting pretty paranoid, so... (laughs) You're always paranoid, though. I 
mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> no, I'm not wrong. That's why I said it. Oh, no. <laughs> I kind of want to argue about it, but you're not, you're really not wrong about that. <laughs> can't argue with me on this. You can't do it. It's against the law. So there's a thing on Twitter where it's like, ex- like explain your podcast badly. And I'm like, so the group of normal people have their world shattered because their DM mate wants to make them question everything. The universe is weird and needs exploring. So I think I probably should have done a very strange mission where it gets complicated. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and stay tuned next time to find out what happens on Board the Opal Star. If you don't want to wait, you can get early access to our episodes over at patreon.com slash pseudonym social. If you like our show, please consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting app so people can know where to find us. We couldn't do this without your help. A Board the Opal Star is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is DM'd and produced by me, Brianna Toiber. I'm Casey, and I'm playing Anima the Ashenforged. Victor, I'm playing Farida the Promethean. My name's Alexis, and I am playing Vilina Sorel the Eldori. With music by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com.